Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is midday, time for our daily devotion. And so I am on our Facebook um, page for the church, getting ready to host our time that we just spend together. We center around the upper room, so we'll read uh, an opening prayer of illumination, read the scripture for today, the upper room devotion, take a moment to reflect on it, and then close in prayer as well. Usually as we gather, we have folks that are going to just leave a quick comment and let us know that they are present. You're more than welcome to do the same thing. Just say hi in the comment box there. I'll take a moment to say good morning to those that do. I'm just watching and waiting. Let's see if anybody leaves a comment. It's a beautiful Wednesday. I'm certain some folks are probably out and about. Someone commented how beautiful it was this morning when they went out to get their newspaper at 6 30. <laughs> Good morning, Stacy. Hi Susan, good morning to you. Howdy. There's a few folks on here. Hi Barbara, good morning to you. Glad you're here today. Hi, Barbara and Chris Mueller. Good morning to you. We're going to be reading out of Joshua today, the Old Testament book of Joshua, chapter 6, verses 1 to 20. Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 to 20. All right, let's begin with our prayer of illumination. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. So a little bit of a lengthy reading. It's from Joshua chapter 6. It is the fall of Jericho. It's verses 1 to 20. Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go out or in. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king, and all its strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priest blowing the horns. When you hear the priest give one long blast on the ram's horns, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town. So Joshua called together the priest and said, Take the ark of the Lord's covenant and assigned seven priests to walk in front of it, each carrying a ram's horn. Then he gave orders to the people, March around the town, and the armed men will lead the way in front of the ark of the Lord. 
After Joshua spoke to the people, the seven priests with the ram's horns started marching in the presence of the Lord, blowing the horns as they marched, and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed behind them. Some of the armed men marched in front of the priest with the horns, and some behind the ark, with the priest continually blowing the horns. Do not shout. Do not even talk, Joshua commanded. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout. Then shout. So the ark of the Lord was carried around the town once that day, and then every day returned to spend the night in the camp. Joshua got up early the next morning, and the priest again carried the ark of the Lord. The seven priests with the ram's horns marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing their horns. Again the army men, armed men marched both in front of the priest with the horns and behind the ark of the Lord. All this time the priests were blowing their horns. On the second day they again marched around the town once and returned to the camp. They followed this pattern for six days. On the seventh day the Israelites got up at dawn and marched around the town as they had done before. But this time they went around the town seven times. The seventh time around, as the priest sounded the long blast of their horns, Joshua commanded the people, Shout! For the Lord has given you the town. Jericho and everything in it must be completely destroyed as an offering to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and others in her house will be spared, for she protected our spies. Do not take any of the things set apart for destruction, or you yourselves will be completely destroyed, and you will bring trouble on the camp of Israel. Everything made from silver, gold, bronze, or iron is sacred to the Lord and must be brought into his treasury. When the people heard the sound of the ram's horns, they, sudden, they shouted as loud as they could, and suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed, and the Israelites charged into the town and captured it. Our devotion writer today is Madeline Tooney. Madeline is from North Rhine-Westphalia in Germany. And here is her focus verse. It is Joshua 6.16. At the seventh time when the priest had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And here is Madeline's devotion for today. The heating in our apartment building was completely broken and was unlikely to be repaired for at least 24 hours. As we settled in to wait, every tenant quickly fell the, felt the chill of winter. My husband and I put on extra layers of clothing and thanked God for electricity to cook with and hot water for showering. I was determined to remain positive. But when we woke up the next morning, the flat was even colder than the day before. By midday, I started to wonder if we should go to a hotel or buy portable heaters, but we didn't have the money for either. Looking for a distraction from the cold, I opened my Bible to Joshua chapter 6. When I read about the Israelites' absolute reliance on God, I was in awe. Instead of shouting in jubilation after God gave them their victory, the Israelites shouted in faith before the walls fell. With renewed faith in God's provision, I began thinking, thanking God. And shortly after this, the heat came back on. Apparently, the necessary part arrived early, and the repair was simple. God provided. Next time I face adversity, I hope to remember this provision and quiet my doubts. Like the Israelites at Jericho, I want to praise God even before I see a breakthrough. Thought for the day is, when doubts arise, I will praise the Lord's faithfulness. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I've had moments where the power has been out in my house uh, in extreme cold weather. When Margaret and I lived in Lee Summit, we had that happen um, a couple of different winters. Um, both of those winters, we had really strong ice storms, and the ice storms took down power lines, and we went without power for a couple of days. I remember we luckily had a gas fireplace in our house and we camped out in front of it a couple of nights uh, in front of that gas fireplace. I think we all know that um, you do not burn a kerosene lantern inside your house uh, without proper ventilation of some kind. So we didn't do that, but we had a gas fireplace and so we, 
we had uh, some heat off of that, but it still wasn't warm enough um, for us. Uh, the second time this happened, uh, a neighbor of ours um, was a newer home, had built uh, been built on the electrical grid with all of their utilities buried, so they didn't have any aerial utilities to have to worry about. And, and so they had power when we didn't, and they were nice enough to let us plug into an external outlet at their house and run a space heater for a couple of days on the second time that that happened. So we, we had the ability to do that. I know people, I've lived next door to people who've had whole home generators installed and and uh, in case the power goes out they have their own backup generator. I've also been to some war torn, or, you know, war torn, I, I've been to weather torn areas of the country um, that have experienced some significant uh, damage. So I've been to Katrina, went there six weeks after uh, Katrina hit New Orleans. I've been to New Orleans and saw the aftermath of it. And, and I saw the aftermath of the tornado that went through Joplin uh, a little over a decade ago. And so I've seen those areas and what damage can be done even by Mother Nature and how it can leave people without some things and, some, and be destitute. Uh, thankfully, for most people, I mean, Ida that just went through New Orleans and Louisiana was devastating in its own right. Um, looks like they're not going to have near the death toll that they had during Hurricane Katrina because levees and things like that worked a lot better than what they uh, did 16 years ago. It, it makes me wonder, though, even in the middle of all of this, is it possible for us, humanly possible for any of us, to thank God for what will come on the other side of the turmoil that we may find ourselves in. I'm not sure about that. My, uh, my daughter Crystal and her wife Bridget are in the middle of um, Bridget's mom uh, succumbing to uh, her COPD and cancer. Uh, they just moved her into hospice and they expect that she probably only has about five days left. I, I'm wondering how hard it is. I'm wondering if it's even possible for the girls to have, um, to be thankful and to praise God even in the middle of this turmoil. You know, I don't think that's uh, the first thing that ever crosses our mind in the middle of struggles in this life. Um, we find ourselves in the middle of doubt and anxiety. We find ourselves dealing with the emotions of the situation. But I'm pretty sure that one of them isn't praise. So I'm wondering how we could maybe think about that and incorporate it. Is it something that we could um, take a moment to pause and pray? You know, for, um, for Bridget's mom, Deb, to be thankful that there is even hospice that's available to care for her and provide that palliative care that she will need over the next few days. And that we live in in a society that has a health care system that can provide something like that, knowing that there are plenty of people around the world who do not have access to that kind of care. It could be that we pray that and give thanks that, that we have that as a provision. Or something else. You know, there's we were maybe thankful that as many people um, that more people survived Ida than then survived Hurricane Katrina, or other things. I mean, there's, there's ways in which we could do this if we would just simply pause and let God speak to us. So I want you to think about today what you're going through and try to figure out if you can give God praise even in the middle of a, maybe a difficult moment in your life or a difficult circumstance. Let's take a pause, moment to pause and pray. So merciful God, we thank you for always being faithful. Teach us to lift up our praises to you and to trust in your deliverance, even before we see a breakthrough in our situation. And we pray this in Christ. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here. Marcella, thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed your birthday yesterday. Um, so I hope all, all of you... Um, uh, can join me again tomorrow for our time of daily devotion. Otherwise, I pray God's peace and grace be upon you. I will look forward to being with you tomorrow. Thanks, friends.